Five men and one woman. A deadly mission. Their leader, Ilich Ramirez Sanchez, called Carlos the Jackal. The Iranian oil minister Amuzigar is the first to arrive, followed by the Algerian oil minister Abdesalam, the Iraqi minister Karim, and the minister from Venezuela, Valentin Hernandez Acosta. Shortly before noon, the commando unit sets out. The sports bags are packed with explosives and weapons. The mission? Kidnapping some of the most influential and powerful men in the world. The woman and the five men are battle tested. The coup in Vienna has been meticulously prepared for months. To this end, the terror commando was trained in a camp in southern Yemen. The curb in production causes competition amongst OPEC countries and the international market to toughen again. The information for the public on the results of today's talks will be very scarce as usual. We were standing downstairs to warm up a bit. Four or five boys and a girl passed by and nodded without saying anything. But they greeted us. The female terrorist asked Tischler, are you a policeman? He said yes, then she shot him dead. Minutes later, Gabriel Croce Tiedemann, called Nada, cold-bloodedly killed an Iraqi bodyguard who was in her way. All of a sudden I saw a person falling against the glass door, and then I heard shots. I had a filing cabinet, relatively heavy, and I think I pushed it in front of the door all by myself. I hid immediately under the desk, taking my telephone to call the police. Within several minutes, the information service at the police headquarters received three phone calls from the OPEC building. I was just thinking about warming up my lunchbox. All of a sudden, there was a call from the information service. He said, Ernst, there's a shootout in the OPEC building. I said, think up a better joke. And he said, listen. The terror commander tries to gain control over the situation in the building. The OPEC employees are driven out of their offices. Then someone knocked at the door and a female voice said, we should come out at once or they would fire. And then she fired through the door. The bullet went through the back of the filing cabinet and got stuck in the files. Then the woman grabbed my hair and pulled me out, saying, put your hands up. 
She pulled me outside and said if I remained quiet, nothing would happen to me. In an office, a Libyan delegation member tries to grab Carlos's weapon. The terrorist executes him on the spot. The hostages are pushed into the OPEC conference room, where already the oil ministers are waiting. Several OPEC employees remain unnoticed on the second floor. We thought they would probably occupy the second floor as well, so we kept silent, hardly moved, because we were afraid they would find us if they were standing outside by the lift. Ten minutes after the attack, a commander unit of seven people arrive at the OPEC building. The stormtroopers have no idea what will await them. In the whole police headquarters, they only had, I believe, five or six bulletproof vests. You must remember, this was 1975. Although the EKO was very well trained when a family member threatened one another, or if it was a brawl in a department store, it was not suited to a terrorist raid. Three officers examine the building and instantly end up in a shootout with the terrorists. After a while they returned and one of the officers was lagging behind. We asked him, what's the matter with you? And he answered, they shot me in the buttocks, but I got the bastard. The Ringstrasse is blocked off between Schottento and Bergtheater. The police has hematically sealed off the air. Journalists are not allowed to advance to the OPEC building. There is the danger that the terrorists will open fire or blow up the building. Near the parliament, there was a single policeman who said there was a detour. I pointed at my ORF sticker in the car and he gave me the signal to pass through and I drove to the OPEC building where I saw a few ambulances. So I parked my car and went slowly up. Several policemen were standing there but I could pass through with my ORF batch and then I was at the OPEC building. More and more onlookers gather in front of the building, while inside the drama takes its course. Repeatedly gunfire can be heard. Die Rettung hat damals grüne Autos gehabt. In those days, the ambulances were green, and the terrorists believed that they were police cars, and were therefore highly nervous. For this reason, the ambulances in Vienna were later white with the word ambulance. This is internationally better known. Paramedics rescued the dead policeman Anton Tischler. The woman terrorist sent the body in the elevator to the ground floor. Tischler was to retire on the 1st of January. And because he wanted some extra money for his planned ski holiday in Switzerland, he had reported voluntarily, therewith signing his own death sentence. In the conference room, the terror commando keeps in check the oil ministers, delegation members and OPEC employees. Altogether, 70 people are taken hostage by Carlos. When he said, I am Carlos the Famous, he knew what he was talking about. In the sense that he conducted many operations without being caught. <laughs> 